What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with episode seven. It's me, Jason Sutcliffe, with Tristan Ketty. We got a great week. We got three of the best female fighters on the planet here. Uh, we have Sabina Matzo. She's coming off a nasty head kick knockout at uh, LFA 9. Deadly. Can't wait to talk to her. 3-0, a real up-and-comer. Uh, second up, we got probably one of the biggest female stars on the planet. Definitely the biggest female star in Eastern MMA, Angela Lee. Can't wait to get Angela on the line. I always love a conversation with Angela. She's super nice, super great person. And uh, we're going to close out the show with Andrea Lee, KGB uh, legacy flyweight champion and Victa prospect. And I'm sure she's ecstatic about here in the UFC uh, introducing a flyweight division. I know she's been waiting for that a long time, so we're going to have a great conversation. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, we're going to be back. We're going to start the show with Sabina Matzo. Can't wait to talk to her. Great person. Let's go. We'll be back. And what's up, Fight House patrons? We're back. We have Sabina Matzo on the line. Uh, how, how you doing, Sabina? Welcome to the Fight House. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very good. Thank you. Training a lot, as always. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Was it my Was it my understanding that you were in class today? Are you, are you in school? Yes, I am. I'm in college uh, studying nutrition. Study nutrition. Nice, nice. Is yeah. it a, is it your plan to to juggle both uh, the the MMA career or if the MMA career takes off, are you kind of going to focus on that? Uh well, I I really like to learn like different things, so that's why I'm here in college. But yep. you never know. Maybe in the future, um, apply my nutrition career in in the sport. Well, you know, you're you are you are definitely got the attention of everybody. I'm pretty sure you went pretty close to viral. With your your head kick knockout to Jamie Thornton, um, what did you think of your performance in the fight? Um, I think well, it was it was what I really expected because um, I, I really train a lot for every fight. So um, I mean, it's something that that really doesn't surprise me because I know the hard work I do. But uh, I mean, it's it's a good opportunity. It was a good opportunity uh, for me to show the world what what I got. You know, did you did, did you know right away like the connection? Did you know that the, that she was going out as, as soon as you landed it? Um, when when I mean when the the kick landed. Yeah, when the landed, like your your reaction was kind of like almost like a look looked almost like a little bit of shock, but at the same time, like you you looked like ecstatic, kind of like it's over. I was just wondering if yeah, you knew right from the connection. Um, I I, I mean. Of course, I I saw that the kick landed, but uh, mm -hmm. you never know. She can land on the floor and, and wake up again, and the fight can keep going. Of course, it was a really hard knockout, so it didn't happen. But um, in the fight, I don't think you can give that kind of opportunities because you never know. You have to be sure, and the one who um, is in charge to stop the fight is the referee. So, true, yeah. true story. Um, you know. One thing I thought was super cool about the fight was your reaction to it. After it was over, like you ran up, obviously, you know, you were going to continue, but it was over. Um, and then you, you you had this, like, explosion of emotion. You ran around the cage. You were screaming. You were, um, What were you feeling in that moment? Oh, uh, well, I was, I was really excited. You know, it's been a while. I, don't, I was not in the cage. So it really feels good to be back. Um even I was training, I, I I don't know, it's a feeling you can't describe. So mm -hmm. it it's good, you know, it's, it's amazing to see all the the work you put on daily and the effort. So it's it's really exciting. You know, that was <laughs> as a pro, that was your first like clean knockout. Was it nice to get that under your belt? Like as a striker, was it good to to be like, Okay, like yeah, you know what I mean? I, I delivered on, on what I trained to do, I put this person out. Would it was that a good feeling for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was it was a good feeling. It, I used it as a like a motivation, you know, because I know I can give more, um, and and I know I can and learn from each fight. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a great. It was a great opportunity. You know, um, you're. You you're a flyweight now. What, what, were you, what were you thinking when you heard the news, like the UFC is going to create the flyweight division, they're going to bring that in? Um, how were you feeling when you heard that? Uh, I think it's great. I mean, 
it was time, you know, there's a lot of 125 pound fighters. Mm -hmm. So uh, that opens a lot, like um, a new world, you know, like a huge category with a lot of girls. So uh, I'm really excited. Um, I know in the future I can step there and, and get the title, but for now, I'm just focused on LFA. You know, so so is the Ultimate Fighter even an option for you? If that's the route they decide to go, would you even consider throwing your hat? Um, I heard it's over 21, so oh. I can't. I'm 20. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, but I mean, I, I, of course I was excited. You know, it's a really good option because whoever wins the, the Ultimate Fighter goes for the title. So, I mean, it's great, but um, and it's not for me right now. It's not. You know, it's it's a really good time to be a flyweight. You know, for a long time, there was no real doors open there for you besides Invicta. And, and then Legacy, you know, came, or LFA came along. They're doing their thing. And then you had Bellator's really stepped up their game with the flyweights. And now you're hearing it for the UFC. Does that make you comfortable in the weight class? Because it seemed like a lot of girls were vacating a weight class that they should have been in to try to fight at 115 or try to fight at 135 just to, to be able to mm -hmm. compete on that stage. Um, does it feel good that you can stay within that comfort zone of 125 and not have to veer outside of it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my kid Tiger, you know. Like, um, it, it's really good because now a lot of fighters can really adapt to their own um, weight class. So it's really good. And, and for me, it's it's the best thing because um, I know I am a 125 fighter. I don't fight in 135 or 150 too low so it, it is perfect and i know in the future they're going to open uh way more weight classes absolutely what is it that you want next i mean that was a huge performance I, i'm sure that you you opened yourself a few doors with that um what direction are you looking to take um in this moment i am um, trying to get better with my game everything like training i don't have a fight schedule yet but um, I think my next step is um, another MMA fight with LFA. With LFA, would you yeah. be would you be looking to score yourself like a title shot off something like that? Because I mean, you literally went viral. Like, what did that feel like actually? Like to turn on the computer and be like, "Wow!" Like I went viral. Like people. Oh, um, yeah. Well, everyone like was talking about it and everything. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, that's my work, you know. Like it's part of the process. It's not like I told you. It's not like super surprising, you know. I know it's part of the job, and I will keep doing and making people happy, you know. Um, yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, now, are, are you? Is your focus like school right now? Is it kind of like okay, I got to get this done and graduate and, and and close that chapter, and then try to to adapt myself into something something different? Um, in this moment, I am focusing. Like training, recovering my body. I'm I'm too young, you know. I don't want to put any pressure on my mm -hmm. body. I want to uh, recover, recover fully from injuries and from, you know, all, all this um, injuries that happens on on camp. So uh, I want to be ready for the next uh, fight for sure, and and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to um, learn a little bit more, uh, trying to put more things in my game. And, uh, yeah, just, just training for, for my next challenge. Well, you know, there's no better place to uh, round out your game than King's MMA. You know, you're training under Master Cordero. Um, what's that like to be in that gym? You're surrounded by by killers down there. They're, they're incredible fighters. Um, what's it like to be in that gym? You're 20 years old, and you're, you're surrounded by some of the best athletes in the world. It's it's great. I mean, it's a great feeling because um, I know they – they all have a lot of knowledge. They all help uh, each other. But the thing I like the most is um, that they are all super humble. And um, they treat each other as family. And I, I was actually looking for that. And, and it's great. I mean, I know I, I'm better every day because um, all of them, because they're like my family. And, and it, yeah, it's my daily, like my life is there, you know. It's, it's not just training. It's getting better as a fighter and as a human. And you know you're you're obviously like a, a Muay Thai specialist um, and a striker. It, when you look at the LFA roster right now, is there anyone that you're like stylistically this would be a great matchup for me? Like, is there is there somebody that you have your eye on? Um, no, you know I I leave that to the decision of the matchmaker because 
Yeah. I'm open to whatever, you know, whatever they they feel like is a good fight, I will take it. But I'm not uh, looking for a specific person. Not, no call outs from Sabina. I understand. Um, how, what's your long term goal for the sport? Like when, when would you like ideally to make that move to, to like the main stage or, or to that next level? When would you like that to happen? Like what's your what's your plan? Well, um, I really want to keep going the way I'm doing. Doing uh, a couple of fights, I want to be like top one of one of the top fighters, and of course, I'll have a world title. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to do remarkable fights. You know, I want to give it all in my fights. That every fight I have is gonna be good. You know, I don't want to um, have any fights like to the decision to the judges or maybe. To the judges but it was like a good fight you know mm, yeah definitely. so i want to show a lot of technique i want to show strength i want to do you know like spectacular fights i want to do that on my whole career and um for sure have um world title view the west of the world well, when you got into you know you, you you were extremely confident when you were in the cage with uh with jamie at what point in the fight did you realize that that this was your fight for the taking like, was there a moment? Was there something that happened? Because you seemed extremely confident when the way you were moving, the way you were throwing your strikes. You didn't seem too concerned about much. Was there a moment when you realized that, that this was, like, your fight to take? Yeah, the moment before the fight, you know. I, I think it's my moment. It's my fight when when I when I decide to fight, you know. When they told me that I'm going to fight, that moment I'm confident, you know. Whoever's going to step in the cage with me, for sure it's, it's going to be a good fight you know because i'm going to give it all so so yeah my confidence comes since the beginning since um training camp everything sweet uh, listen you know i really want to thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to us and, and uh and discuss the knockout as it's uh, as it's known by many of us because i'm telling you i watched it live and i was like that was one of the cleanest knockouts i've ever <laughs> seen it was beautiful um, so thank I want to congratulate you. you on that performance and, and really thank you for, for visiting us here at the Fight House, Sabina. And, you know, I, ho- I hope to see you back in the cage really soon. Thank you very much. All right, best of luck. Day. You too. Have a great night. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Well, that was Sabina. Sabina, you know, uh, very polite, very soft-spoken for someone who could <laughs> knock someone's head off in a okay. single kick. I was going to say, like, if, if, the, if she represents the next generation of, of striking females in the sport. I mean, the f- future is super bright. Very bright. It seems like ever since Holly Holmes dethroned Ronda Rousey, there's been a, like this t- transition towards striking again. I mean, the female, it's oh, that's, that's just the way MMA starts. It starts with mm. grappling, because grappling is most dominant, but then you start to see the fighters get comfortable and they get well-rounded, and then you're starting to see stuff like this, those crazy Muay Thai kicks. You know what I'm noticing is like, there was, a, you know, the, the game evolves constantly and it goes through these mm. different eras of the game. And there was there was a point where um, str- grapplers were competent enough striking yeah. that they could impose their grappling on people, and wrestlers really dominated for like a strong portion. But we're starting to see now where these elite strikers can grapple, it's true. like Joanna, like JJ. You know, when they shoot on her, like she makes them pay. Yeah, the females it's evolved slightly differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and even it, you're even starting to see it with the men, but mm-hmm. it's like. Like uh, JJ is just the best example I can think of right now off the top, where it's like these stri- these grapplers like Esparza when they were fighting, her, like all these grapplers, and they shoot on her, and it's like uh, Gadea even, and it's like she makes them pay. Mm-hmm. It's like at first I defend the takedown, boom boom, yeah. I sprawl, I push out, I do this, and then it's like elbow, 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 like you know every time you shoot on me, that's gonna happen, and it's like those shots start coming from farther and farther and farther away, mm-hmm. and it's like they're just deadly, you know what I mean? And I feel like she's that similar type of person. Yeah, so that, that Chuck Liddell stand up first. Yes, to learn how to get up doesn't matter. I don't want yes. to me in the ground anyway. A hundred percent. That's Which a great that's, for a, the that's sport. a that's a good good analogy. A, a good comparison. Sorry, mm-hmm. it's very Chuck Liddellish. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It. I don't know. She was that was one of the best knockouts I've seen anyways. in a long, long, long time from the women's division. It was so clean. Mm-hmm. But listen, we're gonna be back. We're gonna have one championship Adam one championships Adam weight champion Angela Lee on the line. Can't wait to talk to Angela. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you guys in a minute. Still one women's Adam Wade world champion, unstoppable Angela Lee. All 
Hello, Fight House fans. We're back. We have none other than Ang- none other than Angela Lee on the line. How you doing, Angela? Welcome to the Fight House. Hi, Jason. I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, big fight coming up. How's training camp and everything going with you? Everything has been going great. Um, this this fight camp uh, was absolutely perfect. Um, just rolling into it from my last fight in March, so I feel yeah. better than ever. Is this more familiar to you, bouncing in from camp to camp? I know you did this for like pretty much right from the start of your pro career before you took a little bit of a break there. Um, is this a comfortable feeling for you, going camp to camp like this? Definitely. Um, yeah, in the beginning of my career, uh, I was fighting back to back, and yeah. so it, it definitely feels good to be going um, from fight, fight camp to fight camp and uh, just to stay busy. You know, you got a, a bit of a different uh, matchup on your hands right now. You're, you're coming off a dominant victory over Jenny Hong. Probably one of the, probably the best performance I've ever seen from you. Your hands look so clean. Um, really a great performance. Thank you. Um, but now you're going against Estela Nunes, or Nunes, um, excellent striker, excellent Muay Thai striker. A little bit different for you. Um, what do you think in going into this fight? How do you see this fight? Um, you know, I'm really, really excited for this fight. Uh, I think it's going to be great. Um, I think that Estella is a great matchup for me. Um, the game plan from this for this fight is going to be different from the last fight, um, obviously because of the different style and opponents. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's clear to see that she's going to try and play her game. She's more of a stand-up fighter, mm-hmm. and I'm going to draw to my strength, um, you know, which is taking it to the ground and finishing it there. So... You know, they're not hiding anything. That's my plan, and I don't think there's anything she can do to stop it. So, um, looking forward to implementing my game plan on fight night. You don't know that being your game plan. You know, it's funny you say that. This is the first time I think I've spoke to you where you didn't hi- like you. You were open to talk about the game plan. That's interesting. Um, normally you're like, you know, I don't want to give away too much of the game plan, but I think it's pretty clear cut, right? Like, a, there's no point in hiding it because it's pretty, pretty clear to everybody what the plan is. And I know you've been getting in some time with Ben Askren and learning the funk role and stuff. Uh, what's it been like to work with Ben and work on it with that, that level of a wrestler? Oh, yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, I was able to, you know, back when we were both at Evolve, mm-hmm. um, get some training in together and uh, his transition. Um, wrestling is really such a huge part of MMA. And so just adding that to my arsenal, um, it really helps with the uh, transitions and uh, he's such a great guy. I really look up to Ben. He's a great champion. So it was an honor for me to to, to learn some technique from him. You know, one of the one of the things um, about you and your brother, actually, you guys are you're, you yourself are probably the most well rounded woman in mixed martial arts from the from the female perspective. Um, do you think that 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 is your biggest gift? Is just the fact that like you're able to do this, like you're able to fight a grappler like Jenny Hong and say, okay, I'm going to strike with her, I'm going to keep it standing, I'm going to piece her up on our feet, and then run into someone like Estela Nunes and say, okay, I'm going to go to the ground, I'm going to take you there, and I'm going to sub you. Just to have that variety, um, is that your biggest mm-hmm. asset in this game? You know, definitely. I think that um, because Christian and I have been raised from a small age, from from a young age, um, by my dad to have a very well-rounded skill set, uh, you know, learning mixed martial arts from from the start. It definitely gives us an advantage amongst our, our, comp- our competition. And, um, you know, being able to transition from the striking to the ground and everything in between, um, I think that a lot of fighters are, are missing that gap. And also to play in the areas where we feel strong, uh, depending on the kind of... Um, opponent that we have is, is a huge huge advantage um to play in 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 waters that they're unfamiliar with or they're not as strong so mm-hmm. i really do um see that as one of our um <clears throat> huge advantages in, in the game you know what you speaking of your brother since you brought him up we may as well go there right now um what was it like okay. to see him get back into the cage and get a victory under his belt uh, and bounce back like the way he did Oh, man, that was just such a great feeling for me. Um, I was so proud of him. I know he, he's been working hard, hard mm-hmm. for months on end, and uh, he really deserved it. Um, you know, it, it's nerve-wracking for me to be watching Cade's side, but I feel like um, seeing him get that victory and, uh, you know, really make a huge statement with that comeback fight, it, 
it was great. You know, when when I said it, when he wins, we both win. Sure. And um, or when one of us wins, we both win. And so uh, it was really motivating for me to see that and and, um, and uh, inspiring, actually, for me for, for this next fight. So, um, yeah, it's, it was, it's looking good for Team Lee so far. It's looking good is right. You know, I had the chance to talk to your brother uh, before the fight, and with him, there was just such a different feeling about the fight. Like when I normally talk to him, he's very reserved. He's very relaxed. And he wasn't when we talked. He was like, no, like I got to make a statement. I'm going to go out there. And like this isn't going past the first round. I don't care who they put in. Like a last minute change, whatever. I'm taking them out. Mm-hmm. Did you feel that from your brother that there was just a different energy from him going into this fight? Definitely. And I can kind of relate to that, um, how I felt going into my fight in March. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just had that it's that urge and I think it's due to the fact that we haven't been in the cage for a little while we took a little break last year and so we were both really anxious to get in there and and I had um just so much emotion to finish the fight and uh, I think that that definitely uh gave us that extra push (laughs) definitely um you know I saw I saw your episode on the MMA hour uh, a little while ago with Ariel Hawani and one thing is it hard for you to be humble Angela is it hard for you to you know, they started asking you questions about Joanna or Jacek and, and some of these other fighters from the from the Western MMA scene over here. And and I feel like you want to just be like, like, listen, I could beat these women, you know, like quit selling me short. You know, I, I, I get this. I At one point, it almost seemed like you, you were going to say it. And then you were like, no, 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 like, yeah, I think I would do OK. You know, and it, but it, but I feel like you want to just be like, hey, quit doubting me. You know, like I will beat these women. <laughs> You know, is it hard for you to to stay reserved and just play the humble the humble or take that high road? Um, I wouldn't say it's hard, but I feel like I just I don't have the need to go there. Right. I think that people are going to talk and there's going to be critics all the time, you know, saying what about this, what about that, and I think that you know, I'm just very confident in in my skill set and I know, um, you know, where I stand and and you know, put me against any other female fighter in the world and and I feel very confident going in there with them so I know that I'm just working on myself as a martial artist as a fighter every single day to better myself to be the best that I can be and that's who I compare myself to I want to be the best version of myself so it's not really necessarily compared to all the UFC champion or any other champion Mm -hmm. in in the organization so I think um yeah that's the goal for me and and um (laughs) staying humble is, is is um kind of is kind of just becoming like it's just a way of life for me you know I I um yeah I just don't feel I need to go there so (laughs) you know one thing I will say though is it seems like people are starting to get it you know what I mean from the sense that like Mm -hmm. even though if they're questioning you a little bit but they are putting you in that category with you know a, a, a girl like Joanna um and I've known mm. I've known for a long time that you that you are great. I've been saying it for a long time. I think our, our first conversation was after your second fight. Um, oh, thank you. No, I, I I'm dead honest when I say that. But do you feel like finally you're starting to get that recognition uh, in North America, where people are starting to finally say like, "Hey, this woman is one of the best in the world." Like, do, are you starting to feel that? I do, and I feel like with every fight, it's going to become more and more clear, and I'm going to keep proving people wrong or proving them right um you know i'm just gonna continue doing what i love to do what i do best and um you know people after a while they're gonna start to take notice and and that's why i don't pay too much attention to you know the opinions um or anything like that because Mm -hmm. people they just play with the wind you know (laughs) they so um i think that you know it's nice that people are starting finally you know starting to you know see me as uh, a true champion but i i don't blame them i mean i'm a 20 year old kid that had um you know seven fights and uh or seven pro fights and and um like about 10 fights so far with my amateur record and, and everything so it's going to take time but you know i know from the start that um you know i was aiming to be to be at the top and and um so yeah i mean <laughs> don't pay too much attention to the opinions but yeah. Fair enough. How close to your or to your peak are you? If you had to put like a percentage on it, like how close are we to seeing you at your absolute best? Uh, that's the exciting part because I feel like I didn't even reach half of my potential. I think that you know there's so much more. It's it's really hard if you can't really calculate it because I feel like um, 
know, I've done so much so far, and I'm still very early in in the game, still very early in my career. So I'm. That's the best part about it, you know. I've kind of got this head start on um, on everything, and and um, I just want to continue learning and growing each and every day, and um, you know, just see how far I can go. You know, I was going through your social media. Um, just preparing for the interview and, and seeing what was going on there because sometimes you don't see everything in the Twitter feed, you know. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I saw that you said, you said, you said I, they think that I got distracted. They don't know that this is me motivated. I'm hungry, driven, determined, focused as ever. Why would you write that? What, what, made you, what made you put that out there? Um, you know, um, it's easy for, like, every. People judge you. It's very funny. People judge you off of what they see on social media, but that's mm-hmm. really not everything. Sure. That you know, it's far from the ideal truth of, of the everyday life I'm living. And so sometimes people they'll be like, "Oh, you know, Angela's distracted. She's doing too many media obligations, too many interviews and photo shoots." And it's funny, like they get it all wrong. Um, all these things, it, it it's not a distraction for me. For me, it's it. It's motivation because I see this incredible life that I'm living and, and all these opportunities I'm given. And, um, you know, if if I don't fight, if I don't win, all that goes away. And so that's kind of just like this positive motivation that I use. And, um, you know, so sometimes I kind of like to work in, uh, uh, you know, I just put my head down, work work in silence, and, and, um, and then the end result will show. So, you know, people, they... they they read way too much into social media. And um, so this time around, you know, I'm not going to be posting, like, my every move. I'm just going to, you know, work hard over here. People might think I'm distracted or whatnot. But on fight night, they're going to see the, the results they really show. You know, how much does it play on you to know, like, right now you're at the top. There, I mean, it probably doesn't get much higher than you right now in the sport. Like, you're, you're at an all-time high. And but every mm-hmm. single girl on the roster is coming for that. They don't want to take that from mm-hmm. you. They want to strip that from you. How much does that play on you? Like, how much do you think about that? Like, just that, like you know, this is just another girl that's coming trying to steal my dream. Man, that that motivates me every single day. I know that they're the that the girls out there they're working hard in the gym every single day. They want it. I know they want it bad. Um, you know, who wouldn't want to be in my position? And I know that's something that everyone's gunning for. So that really motivates me because, I mean, right now, like you said, I'm at the top. Everything is just, you know, amazing. It's a dream. Mm-hmm. I say it like this. I'm living the dream, and i got to protect this dream because because I love it so much. You know, I'm going to do anything I can to defend it. And um, so, yeah, live, breathe, fight for this dream. Absolutely. You know, to step away from the fight stuff. Well, actually, you know, there's one more question. I saw a picture of you. What was it like to meet Manny Pacquiao? Oh, wow. That was really cool. That was a really cool experience. Um, Christian just fought, actually, and mm-hmm. we were walking back to the room, and um, and we saw Manny in the hallway, and where Christian was like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> so it was really neat to get that um, right after the win, um, meet one of the, the greatest of all time and uh, just, you know, shake hands with him. And he's such a friendly guy, you know, has this big smile on his face. So um, definitely very, very, very cool experience. You know, uh, one other thing I noticed, it was that, you know, you did a little bit of um, stunt work for Mar- uh, Marvel Iron Fist uh, stunt fighting. You were doing a bit there I saw online. How much fun was that? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was very cool. I mean, it was my first time in New York. I just, Love the whole experience and seeing uh, what goes on behind uh, behind the scenes of um, filming for the TV show for Iron Fist. It was very cool to see the set and uh, to actually do some stunt work on the set. I got to work with the choreographer and the, the stunt team. They're all so nice and um, learning the fight sequences was really fun. It was like um, memorizing a bunch of sequences and different from the regular fighting I'm used to, but. It was uh, it was very cool. I would like to do something like that in the future for sure. You know, speaking, well, you know, saying you'd like to do that. They, they say the fight game. There's a window of opportunity that you have, and it's a small one to to make everything you can, and then it closes. Mm-hmm. Um, you obviously have a lot of time left, but is the big screen something that you have your eye on? Like, okay, maybe 
dabbling in Hollywood wouldn't be such a bad idea, you know, score a little bit of bank, make a couple <laughs> movies. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, definitely. I'm I'm um, open to anything. Um, I feel like, um, you know, you have to you make the most of your opportunities. And, and right now, um, well, obviously, fighting is my number one priority. But um, who knows? I mean, in, in the next few years to come, if um, an opportunity arises, I'll definitely jump on it. And and I saw on, uh, on I think it was Twitter, Twitter or Instagram, one of the two, a, a dish your brother cooked up, and you were like, I love when Christian cooks. How good of a cook is Christian? I didn't know that about him. I didn't know look at him <laughs> putting up some uh, chef-like dishes over there. Yes, he's actually he's a very good cook. He's much better than I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he can make um, he can make anything, really. Uh, he cooks steak, chicken, um, fish, like... He, he's he's really good. He's just got a talent for it. It kind of comes like my mom's a great cook, my grandma's a great cook, and I guess he got that uh, part of the genes. I didn't. <laughs> I burned everything. <laughs> and uh, and how's Rocky doing? Your your sidekick? Oh, he's great. You know, it's kind of hard um, because uh, because of the fight camp, I'm mm-hmm. not really able to spend as much time with him. But. Uh, he, he's just great. He, it's nice to come home to him and, and see that all he wants is love and affection, and he's always there for me. You know, hard days, good days, bad days. Yeah, he's he's my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I read that. I read that he was he was uh, your sidekick. Um, that's awesome. And I guess one more question yeah. we should ask because that's the last time we talked. We talked about how how's great grandma doing. Oh, she's great. You know, last time I got to see her uh, was when I just defended my title in mm-hmm. Thailand yeah. and I visited her and I actually brought the belt um, so she could see it and <laughs> she put it around her waist. It was really heavy, but I helped her hold it. That's awesome. Um, I, it was just such a nice feeling, you know, sure. uh, I live for moments like that and you could see that she's just, you know, very proud and she even cuts out like newspaper articles of me and like saves it. So that's, it's just so nice. I know, I know. Is it, so will she be tuning into your fight? I remember you were saying something about she, that she likes to tune into your fights and stuff. Will she be tuning in, keeping the people at the... Um, probably, yeah. I mean, um, because That's it's in cool Singapore, st- too, she doesn't have to stay up too late for the time difference or anything. Sweet. And um, definitely I'll visit her after and show her some highlights. She likes to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're, that's, I mean, that is the coolest thing to me, that your great-grandma's tuning into your fights and stuff. I find that completely awesome. And I love how close your family <laughs> is. You know, you guys stay tight. I always see the picture of you and your little brothers and your little brother and sister. It's fantastic, man. Um, listen, I really, oh, I really want to... Th- I really want to thank you for taking some time to talk to us. I know you're super busy. You get pulled in all kinds of different directions. So the fact that you make time for us no is problem. awesome. And I want to thank you so much. Uh, it was, it's an absolute pleasure speaking with you. And uh, I appreciate you. all the support since, since the very beginning. Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, I, uh, I, saw it, I saw it early in the fights. I was just like, well, you and your brother. I was just like, you know what? They, it's, the tra- it's in the transitions is where I see it. Like the the gift with you guys is just your ability to move from striking to grappling, and I think that's where the difference is. So and, and I've seen that from day one, and you guys are only getting better. So I, I can't wait to see what the future brings with you guys. Thank you very much, Jason. No problem. You have a great night, Okangela, and good luck in the fight. Okay, you too. Thank All you. Right. All right. Angela, I always have a good conversation with Angela. I think she's super cool, super nice, and awesome. Yeah, and she, you know, she's for someone on her stature, like she always has time. You know, she always makes fifteen, twenty minutes, and uh, very thankful for that. It's funny how we were talking about Sabina earlier and how like the striking is becoming, you know, mm-hmm. prevalent in the female fighting. But uh, she's cl- uh, Angela's classic. Just like you just said earlier, she just mixes it up perfectly. Yeah, like her and her, like you said, her and her brother, are unbelievable. Well, you know what the di- like, uh, like, and I meant it. The difference is like even so, even it, like someone like Sabina, as gifted as she is, yeah, we don't know what she's like on the ground. We know what she wants to do. Exactly, she wants to go in there. She wants to keep it standing, and and that's what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. You know, Angela, like she doesn't have a preference. It's and, and it's to, whatever I need to do, and to be so young and have that. That, that right. exactly that pedigree that, already the training from her father uh is just incredible you know what i mean yeah you see it in, in her brother too like they just they have an ability with her brother it's not so prevalent because obviously men's mma has been around a little bit longer mm-hmm. so you're not gonna notice it it's it's they have a little bit more it's yeah it's not as noticeable yeah. there's a lot of people who are well-rounded because yeah. it's just been around 
Um, women's MMA is obviously relatively new, you know, especially on a high level. Yeah. Um, but like like we were talking about in the interview, right? Like Jenny Hong, an excellent grappler. She beat the shit out of Jenny <laughs> Hong. Real shit. Mm-hmm. Like she beat the crap out of her, man, on the mm-hmm. feet. And then eventually took it to the ground and just pounded her out. Yeah. And then, you know, she's running into a striker now. And it's like she's not even hiding it. She's like, no, I'm going to take you down. And I'm going to sub you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Like <laughs> the confidence is incredible. And it, her brother was different last time too, and you, and I feel a difference with her now. Like normally, they don't like to talk too much about the game plan, but I also think it's pretty clear cut this time. Estella is like a world champion Muay Thai yeah. fighter, yeah. so it's to be expected yeah, yeah. that she's gonna like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm yeah. gonna take you down. I'm gonna take the path of least resistance. I mean, she probably could stick around with the hands. I don't know if she's gonna win a fight with a world champion Thai fighter. She's good. She's real good with her hands. As long as she's, but as long as she's mixing it up, it shouldn't be. She, she, maybe she, she can get her hand, get her hands going. She, she probably can because yeah. the thing is, is that her grappling's so good that it'll open up the door for her. It's almost like a, like a DC, yeah, right? Like DC exactly. striking isn't superb, but his grappling is so good that opens that holes. It, it opens holes because guys have to be more tentative. They and it opens up room for him to strike. For sure. And and she's similar in the women's division. Like these girls. And I'll tell you right now, she gets you to the ground, you're in trouble. You're in all kinds of trouble. Yeah. Angela's in a great spot, too, because she can get better and better and better and better, and she has so much leverage. She doesn't have to go to the UFC. She no. doesn't have to go here or go there. If the opportunity arises in the future and she wants to become a megastar, she wants to do that. But look, look, like you were saying earlier, think about how many people over there love to watch her. Just because we don't quite get it. We don't, we're not under, we, maybe it's like we the don't. average fan in North America doesn't understand what, what one means over in you know, the People East. don't realize that, like, see, we don't hear about this because we the UFC is not going to put this out there. It's not. You're going to yeah. find this in North American media. But the fact is, is that one FC has pushed them out of Asia. Yeah. Like when's when's the UFC going to Asia? That's true. Like they and and for people to think that one FC isn't a huge promotion is crazy. They're they're worth billions themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're they're a huge promotion in Asia. Yeah. We just don't like to give them the, the respect because we feel like oh, if you're not doing it here, then it's not mm-hmm. top level. Which is you know whatever. Whatever yeah. people are going to think, what they want. But as you see, the UFC start start you know Bellator and UFC start coming to the middle. Eventually, you know, you, you might have to make a choice. She might be like, I don't even want to go over there ever, ever. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Listen, yeah. there's four billion people in Asia or something like that. I, know. I don't All know. I, that's not like an 1%. accurate number, but yeah, there's a lot of freaking people, man. Yeah. Like, they're, they're not suffering for fans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're going all over the place. Like, just over just in the past year, they, they've they doubled the events. Like, they're going all over the place, you mm-hmm. know? And they're selling out. They're doing sure. huge. So, she's a superstar. She doesn't need to come here. She has no reason to do that unless it's for, like, the challenge. Unless she feels like there's some people over here and she wants to make it known. Mm-hmm. But I don't see that happening. I don't see her having a reason to do that. No. Maybe, maybe, maybe in like seven years when yeah. she's the dominated there. The la- like I said, the la- as the landscape changes, you don't know. But right now, she yeah. has so much leverage. Why would you ever want to even consider? Why would no. you even consider it? I wouldn't do it because she's not going to get the put. She's not going to get the. She's not going to get the treatment here that she gets there. Yeah, no, she deserves. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean, is she? Could she be jo- Joanna today? Pro- probably not. Mm-hmm. Probably not. But. She's twenty years old. Mm-hmm. I tell you right now, if you want, if you if you are adamant about seeing Joanna win that fight, you better make it now. It's true. You better make that fight now because every day that passes, that girl's getting better and better and better. Like if you seen the growth in her striking between the Jenny Hong fight, or sorry, not Jenny Hong. Um, I forget who she fought before Jenny. I can't remember. But mm-hmm. if you seen the the growth between those two fights and when she stepped in with Jenny Hong, and she. Oh, Mei Yamaguchi. Yep, yep. Mei Yamaguchi. It was the, f- the title fight. And you see the difference in her striking. It, crazy. The improvement was crazy. She was throwing straight shots, hard straight shots, walking forward, throwing kicks, head movement. She's only getting better. Yep. She's got six years before she's even in her prime. You know? Yep. Her prime's what, 26 to like 32? Like I said, she's got leverage. Huge leverage. Mm-hmm. Anyway, another great conversation with Angela Lee. I'm a huge fan. I always have been a huge fan since I saw her the first time. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be back. Uh, We have one last guest, Andrea KGB Lee. No better way to end the show. Another great uh, interview, another great girl, Uh, great fighter. Can't wait. Stay tuned. We're going to be back. Thanks, guys. For your winner, by tap out, due to our bar, Andrea KGB Lee, your new LFA flyweight world champion. 
Welcome back, Fight House fans. We're here with none other, none, none other than Andrea KGB Lee. How's it going, Andrea? Welcome to the Fight House. Glad to be here. Thanks. Going good. Good, good. How's everything been? You had a successful trip with uh, Andy there. She defended her King of the Cage title. Yes, and we we're all still trying to come down off of that that cloud. Yes. You know, we we're all so excited for her. Um, so and now I'm trying to, you know, convert, you know, change, get my mindset to where it needs to be for my fight next weekend. Absolutely. And speaking of which, you got a tough one against Liz Tracy. Uh, what do you know about her? How do you feel like you guys match up? Um, well, I know she's she has a wrestling background and she has pretty good jujitsu a base. I think she's a purple belt. I'm not 100 percent on that, but I hear she's pretty slick on the ground. Um, I'm sure she hears the same things about me too. Uh, I, I know she's a lot shorter than I am, and her reach is her reach is is not very long. I have a 69 and a half inch reach, and I'm not wow. sure what hers is, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's close to mine. Um, but I know she's tough, and you know she likes to press forward and push the pace. So, and I'm a, push, a pace pusher too myself, but uh, I don't want I don't want to be stupid and get reckless and just like charge forward like she will. Fair enough. You know, the one thing about your game that as you get as you you know you move along in your pro career here, your grappling is coming a long way, and your striking's always been good. But do you feel like it like mm-hmm. those because your grappling is becoming so good that it's opening up even more doors for your striking right now? I mean, yeah, I th- yeah, I think so. I mean, because you know, it's because I'm confident with with going to the ground. So I mean, if something happens, you know, and I get my leg caught, so I'm by throwing a kick or. You know, or I happen to be in the middle of a combination, you know, and I get double legged, you know, I'm going to be okay because I feel confident and comfortable in my jiu jitsu. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it necessarily help, it helps to open up anything for my striking, but it definitely saves me when I get taken down because of my striking. Fair enough. Um, you know, it's big news for, for you ladies in the flyweight division. Obviously, the UFC has announced that they will be starting up a flyweight division, which I know is something that you've been mm-hmm. waiting for for a long, long time. Um, what were your feelings like when you heard the news? Uh, I was excited, Absolutely. like everybody probably else was. You know, I mean, it's been a long time coming. And uh, just happy that it's, it's finally it's finally going to happen this year. Because I keep saying, maybe next year, maybe next year. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about it because I know that, you know, by, before the end of the year is up, I'll be in the UFC. And I know that's something you've been waiting for for a long time. Um, are you as ready as you want to be to make that jump to the UFC? Because I remember, like, uh, I think the first time we talked, probably going back maybe seven, eight months, um, you were saying, like, you don't want to get there too soon. You don't want to, like, get there and lose your spot. Do you feel like like you're in a good place to make that jump right now? I think so. And I feel like I'm, I'm still going to be able to get a few more fights in before I do make that jump. Hmm. Um, so... I, I don't know. I think you know. I mean, it's just, it's another promotion. I mean, I've I'm, I've been fighting Invicta with all of the the high level flyweight, you know, women in the world. You know, I don't think that, you know, it's it's going to be that much of a difference. You know, I mean, I know that a lot of the 135ers and the 115ers are probably going to co- either go up or come down. You know, that are in the UFC. Sure. But I I still feel confident that you know I'm I'm on all of their levels. You know, one thing that I thought, like, the irony of the situation was just crazy was that they were saying that, you know, they were going to um, have a t- go through the, the the ultimate fighter and crown a champion. And, and, you know, the tryouts are on the 23rd, I believe. But you fight on the 20th. And the irony was just crazy. Yeah. You've been waiting for this the whole time. And then, like, all of a sudden now it's, like, three days after your fight. Is that even going to be possible for you to take that route? Yeah, we are taking that. I don't know. We've, we've taken that in, into consideration, you know, and. Um, if, if I don't make it, if I don't get to go to the tryouts, then it's, you know, then it's okay. You know, I mean, we're not, you know, I mean, it, it would be nice to be able to go and be on the show, but if I don't make it, then, you know, I feel like I said, you know, I'll, I'll be in the, in the UFC, you know, with or without the show. Yeah. Um, so I don't think my feelings are going to be, be hurt. I'll just, 
you know, I'll, I'll be sitting at home doing my homework. <laughs> Fair enough. Every week. Um, yeah, you know, because like, I don't know if you particularly even need the show. Like, you have pretty, you have a pretty good following. Um, you know, you, you, very, very entertaining fighter. You have a lot of uh, market, market. Uh, you're very marketable. So, do you feel like, like maybe even like it, it wouldn't even be worth it for you to go to the show? Not worth it in a way, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, it almost be an easier road for you to just kind of go your own route. Right, and. You know, we've discussed that, you know, me and my husband, who's yeah. also my coach, you know, Don here. Um, we've, we've talked about that, and, you know, we, we feel like it could, I mean, yeah, it could help me build an even bigger fan base. I mean, I already have a huge fan base, and, um, I mean, my name's already out there, so I know that, like, the Ultimate Fighter is really for, like, mostly girls who, who don't have much of a name and they're trying right. to get their name out there. At least that's how I feel. Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that it's necessarily for me. I mean, I'm not about drama anyways, you know, <laughs> and that's kind of what the show is all about. You know, <laughs> they, want, they want to bring drama to the show because that's what keeps people inter interested yeah. in watching it. And I'm not a type of person to get all emotional in, in front of in front of people, in, period. I mean, like, I don't even like to cry in front of my own husband. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to want to cry in front of a camera to where a thousand people, not a thousand, I mean, like, freaking hundreds and millions of people can, like, watch me, you know? So, I mean, I, I'm, I wouldn't be there for all of that. I'd be there to fight. And, I don't know, if I, I was... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's just not... That's just not me, you know? I'm not going to go in there and either say if I have an injury, you know, of course the camera, the camera guys, the, the TV, the, pr pr the promotion, you know, they would want to like blow that up. They would want to make that such a big deal. You know, let's say if I had a minor injury, they want to blow that up, you know, and I'm just not about that. I'm not a drama queen. Or if I have an issue back at home, you know, or I'm missing my daughter, you know, they yeah. want to see tears because I'm missing my daughter. I'm like, I just, I can't do all that. I can't play into it. Fair enough. You know what? I was just about to say to you, like, it seems like uh, almost the fighting isn't even the hard part. You know, it's like the hard part is kind of like, you know, you'd be away from your family and, and you you can't have any contact with the outside. And then mm -hmm. there's also like the numerous weight cuts that you'd have to do. I mean, if you're on the show for six yeah. weeks and you have three fights, you'd have to essentially do three weight cuts. I mean, I'm sure you'd ha you'd keep your diet under control, but it's still a lot of work. Um, it is. It yeah, almost it seems be. like those things are, are, are the harder part. The fighting is, you know, what you, you're already good at that. You know what I mean? You're already, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So... Do you feel like those those are the, the the parts that would make that difficult? Like, would it, would it even be would the wake up be difficult for you to do multiple times like that in six weeks? I've done it before in the amateurs where I fought a lot like that, um, so I'm I'm used to that cutting weight like that. Yeah. Uh, but I think that yeah, the hardest part would just be away from my family and not being able to, to make any contact. Uh, then I guess I could write letters. I think I think you can write letters, but I think that's about it. Well, you're in a um, un unique situation too, where your husband's your coach. Yeah. Yeah, like you guys spend a lot of time together. I'm sure that would be a very difficult thing for you to step out of that and into some into this other environment, seeing as like yeah, how close you guys someone are. Yeah, someone else be in my corner and coach me. That would be very difficult. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I mean. I can I can imagine that would be a problem for you. Well, not a problem, but but an issue <laughs> to deal with. Um, have you reached out to the UFC at all? Like ab about this? I have this? not reached out to the UFC. No, okay. Um, mm -mm. How does it how does it feel to know that it's just a matter of time before you're standing in a UFC cage? You know, Bruce Buffer's calling your name. Like, just that whole everything you've been watching on TV and dreaming about is is tangible now. It's literally at your fingertips. How's that feel? Mm-hmm. Feels great. You know, I don't really know how to how how else to explain it. I mean, any other juicy words, you know, yeah. to throw in there. But I mean, it's exciting um, because now, I mean, I've been I've been able to see it. You know, I could imagine in my head before, but now, you know, it's like I'm just I'm maybe a few months away. You know, so it's just it's crazy. I still want to get my other fights that I have, you know, booked up for this year out of the way, and uh, try to win them all. You know, I want to go in with sure. those. A great record. I just, you know, I have two losses on my record, and that's all. I don't want any more losses. So, <laughs> praying enough, and knocking yeah. on wood, you know, that I keep it just two two losses and then continue. 
Well, this this Invi- up the lens. this Invicta Rocking fight up. that you have coming up, it's this is your last one with Invicta on the contract, right? Yes, on my contract. Yeah. So, would you, are you even are you going to try to renegotiate with them, or is it is at the point now that you've heard this news where it's like, okay, I'm just going to sit back and see how this whole thing plays out? Yeah, I mean, this kind of uh, kind of thrown like a, a rock in the road, or you know, it's kind of we're not really. I don't know. It kind of changes things a little bit, but yeah. we were and are uh, planning on to renegotiate our contract you know and 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 discuss that i don't know if that's going to change you know uh as far as i know we were planning on you know just renegotiating our contract um and i know you um are they going to try to hold you to like an exclusivity deal because you're also the legacy flyweight champion and i'm assuming that that i don't think so no i'm sure that you know that the deal will probably still be you know would it I'm sure that we'll work that into the the contract where I can still fight for Lexi. Have you talked to LFA at all about what's next for you there? Yes, we have. Not is there anything we have anything in the works? Um, well, they know that I'm going to be re-signing with Invicta, yep. but I'm going to continue fighting for them too. Sweet. Um, you know, it's a kind of a good time to be a flyweight. You guys, like, uh, you went from. You know, you had Invicta, and obviously you had Legacy, but then you had Bellator open up. They're just trying to build a division. They just signed a whole bunch of flyweights. Now you mm-hmm. have the UFC saying that they're going to open a flyweight division. It's just all of a sudden there's these options for you ladies at 125. Um, is Bellator even an option for you anymore once you hear the UFC say, like, okay, we're, we're going to do this? Not anymore, no. And, uh, I mean, we, we had we had off, been offered, you know, a fight we've we've been offered at least once or twice you know to come to Bellator and we had already decided that that was not the way that we were going to go we were not going to go down that route because we didn't want to end up getting signed to Bellator and then being on on an exclusive contract and then UFC open up the flyweight division and then me be stuck in a contract with Bellator and not even get the opportunity to go to the UFC right well not only that but the UFC tends to tends to um, like uh, not blackball, but they kind of keep people. If, once they go to Bellator, they rarely get that opportunity. Like the UFC doesn't really sign too many people from Bellator. Right. They, they kind of don't like to give them that um that that recognition almost as being on the same level, right? So so uh, maybe it was a smart move because a lot of guy a lot of people get stuck there once they go there. The uh, those doors close right. to the UFC. I, I'm sure was that part of your train of thought? It was just like they might not even open that door to me. Well, yeah, we were worried about that. Mm. Um, just just being stuck with Bellator and then and not getting the opportunity to go to the UFC. So that's that's why we decided to turn that that route down. You know, what you got you, know, you got a couple fights ahead of you. You're saying, um, do you feel any pressure to put on like a like to score a devastating finish, like to to really make your mark as, as you see these other options unfolding, like as the UFC is setting up to make this division and you want to make your name, and I'm sure you'd like to be the head of that division and, and carry the belt. Do you feel not like a, a little bit of pressure to, to go out there and make a devastating performance? I don't feel any pressure to do that. It's something that I just want to do. Sure. Because um, that's, just, that's just who I am. You know, I mean, like I want to I want to go out there and, and finish my opponent and, uh, you know, a uh, like you said, a devastating fashion. You know, I think that's what everybody wants to do. Uh, but for me, I don't think it's just that I have a point to prove. It's just something that I want to do, and I would love to do every time if I have that, if I can make that, you know, happen. You, you are, uh, you're, you have an, an interesting ability to finish fights for a flyweight. You know, you're four and one in your last five, and all your wins have come by finish. Um, do you think that that's something that's going to stand out when when they come to recruiting and it's like, okay, this this girl's exciting, you know what I mean? Do, do you do you feel like that's going to be one of you, one of your kind of like negotiating tools almost when, when when you sit down with the UFC? Is just what you bring to the table? I think so. You know, I feel like they already know what it is that I bring to the table. I mean, I've heard I've heard through you know people that are that are high up you know that like i mean not necessarily i won't say dana white but i know sean shelby you know is one of the matchmakers you know have heard that he's like a huge fan of mine oh, nice. or well i mean he, he really likes me 
a lot. You know, he likes my fighting style a lot. And uh, and I remember hearing that, like, after my fight, even though I lost to Sarah Delalio, I remember hearing that after the fight. You know, it was something that Shannon had told me. She's like, you know, Sean Shelby was really impressed with your performance and uh, really liked your fighting style. Uh, even though I ended up losing there at the end, but he, he was still really impressed. And then I heard it again here recently, um, you know, since they opened up the flyweight division. Um, but and then also, you know, Mick Maynard, who is um, who is also a, a matchmaker now for the UFC, who was my boss for LFA, not LFA, but Legacy. Yeah. If you didn't, know, if you did or didn't know that, I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. so, I remember the the last time that we had spoke. We were t- you were talking about Mackenzie Dern. You were looking to, to line yourself up for a fight with Mackenzie Dern. Now, given the fact that the UFC's opened up a flyweight division, she's likely going to have to make that jump up to 125. I don't think she's going to be able to make 115. To- she's had a really hard time doing it. I don't imagine that gets easier. Is that still a fight that you're interested in? Uh, Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not- I have nothing against her, you know. Yeah, yeah. The thing with that is that we've, I, you know, we were all thinking that it would be it would make a great fight for for LSA, you know, because she's she's a huge draw, huge huge draw, yeah. you know, and I'm a pretty big draw myself. I mean, she she brings a, a certain fan base to to the table, you know, and and I bring mine, and I just thought that we thought that it would be an interesting fight, maybe, but but not. I don't think I don't think that she is necessarily ready, you know. You don't that. think that she's necessarily ready for that? I don't think so, no. What is, what is it about her about her game that makes you say that? Well, I mean well, her striking is coming along, but yeah. I it's you know, it she's been fighting I mean, she's been fighting, you know, she's fought a couple of no namers. No, 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 no. Well, okay. Well, Montana Stewart. I know Montana Stewart. Montana Stewart's great, and that just wasn't her night. I really think that Montana could have put on a better, better performance than that. Uh, that was, she was definitely having a, having a bad night that night, and I, and I know why. But I mean, a few of the other girls that she's fought against, you know, I had never heard of them. And then their jujitsu was not that great, and she wasn't able to like finish them. You know, I mean, like this last girl that she fought, even talked about in her her um her interview that she you know hated training jujitsu. she did not like rolling around with people you know she didn't like getting her hair all over them Catherine Roy yeah nasty huh uh, Catherine uh Catherine Roy is that who is you're that talking her about name? yeah yeah the last girl that she fought uh, yes yeah yeah Catherine Anyways, Roy. so I was just really really surprised that every time that she was able to get to the ground that girl was able to get back up yeah, you know, and, and and I was I was blown away by that. I'm like, this is a girl who doesn't even train jujitsu. So I think that even though her, even though Mackenzie's jujitsu is incredibly good, it's amazing, you know, it, uh, at jujitsu tournaments and stuff like that. But when, whenever it comes to like MMA, you know, it, it just whenever you're getting hit in the face and stuff, it just it obviously changes everything you know you get you keep getting punched in the face and you go from like a black belt to like a brown belt you know it's like you're you just it's it's harder sure to transition from strictly jujitsu to becoming an mma fighter and i feel like if she wasn't able to like hold down this white belt who never trains jujitsu she's able to get back up and she wasn't able to submit her then i feel like i know i know way more than that girl does you know, and I'm good on my feet. I'm good at defending takedowns, and um, I'm pretty good on the ground too. So I don't know. I just don't think that it would be a fair match. You know, one thing I noticed about not Mac- to sound like super, huh? No, sorry. Go ahead. Not to sound like. Well, uh, never mind. Never mind. You can go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I was just I was saying the one thing I noticed about about Mackenzie's style too is, and after you had said to me that you were interested in fighting her, I watched her fight and kind of with the thought of like you two squaring off. And I was like, when she comes in throwing punches, her chin is incredibly high. And mm-hmm. I was like, I think she's, I think you would tag her to be completely honest with you. Um, that was and just she my. She doesn't th- like. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and you can tell she doesn't like to get hit in the face. Yeah. She's not very used to it. Yeah, that, I think that's a good way to put it. I don't think she's used to it either. Um, and I just think that I don't think she's ever really, really been cracked. 
you know what I mean? Um, the way she was lunging in, uh, she was throwing her punches, her chin was really high. And, and like the only reason I noticed this was because it was after we had talked and I was like, huh. And when I watched her fight Catherine Roy, I was like, maybe th- I was watching her kind of like, so, like seeing what I thought about you two fighting. And I was like, I don't know. I think she's going to, she would get hit a lot and really hard. And I think that's, it would be kind of how that went down. I think you're kind of right in, in what you're saying that she's just not really there yet. You know, like she's a little, little bit away yeah. from that yet. Um, is there anybody when you look like it's going to change everything, obviously, when the 125 division opens up, you're going to have people coming up from 115. You're going to have people coming down from 135. Plus, you're going to have all the girls that are already at 125. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anybody that's outside the 125 division that like you, you feel like is going to make that move to 125 that you would like to fight or somebody that you would like to, to step in there with? Um, there's no one necessarily in particular um that i just i just am like eager to fight you know it for me it's whoever they put in front of me fair enough you know i just want to get that opportunity to to eventually fight in the ufc cage and so whoever they put in front of me you know i'm I'm not going to turn that down i'm gonna take that opportunity and, and and go with it fair enough you know i think a better way for me to 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 word that question to you was um is there anyone you feel like you you'd like to test your skills against like skill to skill when you look at their style you're like you know that's a style i'd really like to compete against i think that's kind of a better way to word that question no i got i got what you're saying i was just saying like i not i don't have anybody that i just want to test my style against fair enough um I mean, I know that Yolanda Jezerdek, you know, she's wanting to come up to 125 and maybe fight with the title. So I'm hoping, you know, one day that, you know, maybe her and I will be fighting against each other. I think that would fight. be interesting. That would be an interesting fight. Um, hopefully we get to watch that one day. Um, you know, I really hope we get to see you in, in the uh, in the UFC cage sooner rather than later because I know it's something that you've been waiting for for a long time. And I think everyone's been waiting for this flyweight mm-hmm. division for a really long time. Um, it's about time. It's it's been needed, and uh, hopefully we can get you in there soon and uh, get you in one of those Reebok outfits. I'm sorry, you broke up on that last part. Sorry, I said hopefully we can get you in there and, and get you a fight in the UFC and see you soon and uh, have you in one of those Reebok outfits making the walk down to the octagon. <laughs> oh yeah, well most definitely. I really wish that I could walk to the cage in my own outfit, but. Yeah, well, I won't be too picky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Eh? Yeah. We'll take what we can get. That's good with us. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, I'll take what I can All get. Right. Awesome. Well, listen, I really look forward to it. Uh, thank you for always being accessible and uh, giving us some time here at the Fight House. We really appreciate that. And uh, enjoy your night. Of course. Anytime. Awesome. You too. Thanks right, so much, Andrea. Care. Have Bye. a good night. Tough girl, man. I, I'm super excited to see her compete in the UFC. She's like, she's almost. I describe her like like cowboy, female version. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, uh, I'm not too, uh, you know, I'm not too um, knowledgeable. So why was there never a 125 pound division? Like, what, because what, why would you go from 115 to well, to because they they didn't have a ton of girls. But I mean, I mean. Neither did the 115 or the 130. Well, that's it. That's what I mean. They they gapped them like that for a reason. I see. Okay. Right. So it wouldn't it wouldn't thin out the divisions. You're either going to be a 135 or you're going to be a 115. Right. Had that's they have tough. gone 115, 125. Yeah. Then you'd see. A you'd see. You know what I'm saying. So sense, yeah. it was like they never wanted like to really uh, water it down. I guess is one way to put it. Mm-hmm. But now the both divisions are solid. Like they've built two solid women's divisions. Mm-hmm. I think they're ready. Yeah. They're ready to bring in the 125. Well, they see know? the stars like like. Mackenzie Dern and you know and for sure they're just going to jump on that scoop, scoop them all up this is the division that should have been made from the jump yeah the 145 division is bullshit let's be honest here yeah they're trying to build it for cyborg but it's bullshit who's in that division yeah can you even name me five fighters that fight in that division can you even name me five women who fight in that division Holly no, Holm is a 135er yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, they pushed they, they the champ is a 135er yeah Right now, they have two legitimate featherweights that they could pit together, which is Cyborg and Megan Anderson. And other than that, yeah, there's, there's, nobody. there's nobody there. Mm-hmm. That's what that's why I was originally asking the question. I was surprised that. Right. Yeah, but it, it totally makes sense. They want to make sure that they they know yeah. exactly where, where each fighter would fight. Yeah, and it, I mean it's a good it's a good business move. Yeah. It's it's excellent to build the two divisions. I just think that they 
they should have gone 25 before 45. Like they were set, they were ready to do that. There was, I understand they wanted to build around Cyborg because she's a draw, but they're just the talent pool's not there. Yeah, they don't have the depth. Mm -hmm. You can't even make a top 10. There's not even 10 girls in the division. It's true. Yeah, and a Andrew Andrew Lee is definitely the the toll package that we've been t we've talked about on the podcast. Yeah, before. yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And there's a lot of other girls that are you know you're going to see Jessica I mm -hmm. probably make that move to 125. I think that's more natural for her. Who I really feel bad for is Valerie Laterno. <laughs> she just left to go to Velour because there was no flyweight to it, and she said, I can't keep doing this 115 thing. It's killing me. Brutal. And then all of a sudden it's like she leaves, signs with Bellator, and it's like okay, we're going to do a 125 division. She's probably like, what the fuck? That's the a free market. Though. That's what happens. Yeah, it's way gotta, gotta Hopefully she got the money. I mean, hopefully she got hooked up and she got, you know, she gets a sponsorship, she gets the mm -hmm. money. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. But as far as this 125 division goes, I, I think you're going to see Mackenzie Dern make the jump to 125 because I think that's a better weight class for her. I think she was only trying to make 115 because that's what the UFC had mm -hmm. available. Um, you got Andrea Lee in there. You got, there's a lot of girls that are going to make that jump. You mm -hmm. know, Invicta's packed full of 125ers. Legacy's got a lot of 125ers. Sabina uh, Matzo. Is a 125er. She'll be there yeah. probably in a it's couple a, it's years. It's inevitable for mixed martial arts to go where there's no gap larger than 10 pounds. You know, I mean, yeah. to have a 20 pound weight gap, even at even at 185 to 205 pounds, is crazy. And I mean, uh, the cruiserweight that cruiserweight division eventually is going to come, you know, one way or another. Yeah, you know, and uh, this is just another part of it. You know, making sure that the fighters can can fight at the weight that's comfortable where they don't have to hurt themselves. Yeah, it's nuts. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, We'll see what happens. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the UFC is going to do what they're going to do, and all the, all of them are going to do what they're going to do. But it's good if for I was fighters. Bellator, I'd almost I'd almost try to com make a couple of those other divisions. Mm -hmm. See if you can't entice some people to come over. You know, for sure, that'd be top of my list if I was like a two twenty division. Yeah, yeah. two twenty five, two twenty, something like that. Yeah, I would probably what I would probably do is just get rid of the light heavyweight. This is for another podcast, but I would probably just go two two hundred five and up, just to have super heavyweight fight whoever whoever and then put the 195 pound division for all the guys that want to step down the, the shoguns they want to step down and go back down to 190 maybe, maybe you can make 195 and then above i think it would that, have to be or, or 200 yeah, even yeah you know what i mean something there 200 and then 220 or whatever yeah above do. yeah you know what i mean and then everything above that's just heavyweight but i want to see john jones fight a heavyweight <laughs> yeah i would love to see john, yeah. john jones is a <laughs> john jones can compete in heavyweight was he oh, gonna yeah. beat them all maybe probably not but he could compete yeah, there's no way that the, it'd be crazy to, th to think he can't. Yeah, so I don't know. We're gonna see. I'm super excited for this flyweight division. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited to see what how it ends up with the how this jockeying ends up. You know, Joanna's gonna want to be a two division champion. You can for sure. That's already in, you know that. Okay. That's that's. And to be honest, like JJ's sharp. I would love to see her and Andrea Lee. I don't know if Andrea could beat her. I mean. Anyone can win. It. It's a fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they both, they go. They throw bombs. It's going to have to be, to beat Joanne, it's going to be have to be somebody that's really, really well-rounded. But she could be big enough to take those shots. It's possible, yeah. You know what I mean? She could be big enough. I'm scared of Joanna, though. Like, if you think about, Joanna's lost two fights to Sevchenko. Yeah. Right? You know, like, size does matter. That's you know true. what I mean? You, if she's bigger, if she can be big enough to take the shot, yeah. then, you know, who knows what happens. But... We we'll have to close this one down. This is another week in the books. Uh, you know, we we uh, great had a lot of great guests, a lot of great episodes. Um, really enjoyed it, and uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Tune in next week. We're gonna have more guests. It's gonna be a a good time. You appreciate are. you guys. I am Jason Sutcliffe, <laughs> and I'm here with Tristan Ketty, and we're out. <laughs>